Hi, I'm Pam and I'm here to talk about video games. Today I want to talk about photography in games. A lot of games have a shooting at things, and sometimes it's nice to do it with a camera rather than a gun. So I'm going to list my top 5 uses of photography in video games. First is the earliest example I can recall of playing a game that featured photography. Though technically you're not using a camera, it's called an e-quarter. Lost Secret of the Rainforest was released in 1993 by Sierra. It's an edutainment game that aims to teach about environmental ethics in a point-and-click adventure package. The e-quarter you use in this is much like Star Trek's Tricorder. It scans and records images and does data analysis. As you go through the game's environments, you can use your e-quarter to search around the screen and it will light up when you can record something. This could be anything from animals and vegetation to environmental dangers. After you've recorded it, you can examine the entry, where you're given a brief description, and can view the photo, which, frankly, is very low resolution, but I'll forgive that. You can even use the e-quarter to quiz you on the objects you scan. Lost Secret of the Rainforest does a great job of using photography and recording in order to add a game mechanic, give you something to collect, and teach you something as well. Because learning is fun. Next is a much newer game where pictures taken in-game could also make their way into the real world. Firewatch was developed by Campo Santo and released in 2016. You play Henry, a fire lookout at Shoshone National Park. Besides having a mystery to solve and wonderful conversation between Henry and his supervisor Delilah, taking in the views of the park is one of the real highlights of Firewatch. At one point, Henry finds a disposable camera that you can use as you see fit. Though the photography here doesn't integrate into the gameplay quite as clearly as the other games on the list, as it's an optional thing, it does integrate into the feeling the game gives you. Much of the experience is about exploring and appreciating the picturesque Wyoming wilderness. The photography adds to that. It encourages you to take your time, take in the environment, and line up that perfect shot. Of course, the type of pictures taken can also say something about the player. Did you take lovely nature shots, capture the wildlife you came across, or did you photograph things that could be evidence of conspiracy? For those who played Firewatch on PC, there was an extra bonus. For a small fee, you could have your roll of photos developed and mailed to you as a souvenir of your time in the game. Third is an action-adventure game that takes place in a world full of creatures to discover and conspiracies to uncover. Beyond Good and Evil was developed by Ubisoft and released in 2003. You play Jade, a woman of many skills. She's a fighter, a caretaker of orphans, and a photojournalist. Photography factors into the game in many ways. Initially, you're tasked with cataloging all the species of animals within the city of Hillis in exchange for currency, which will let you buy items and upgrades for your hovercraft. Seeking out these animals adds a fun collection element to the game and motivates you to explore, as some of them can be tough to find. Soon, Jade is also embarking on investigative journalism to uncover the truth about disappearances in Hillis. She infiltrates areas and takes pictures of what she finds in order to spread the truth to the people. The best thing about photography in this game is how seamlessly it integrates with the story. Jade uses her photography skills both as a way to pay the bills and as a tool for truth and justice. Fourth is a game where you play a photojournalist at the end of the world. Dead Rising was developed by Capcom and released in 2006. As Frank West, you're on your way to Willamette to investigate why the National Guard has sealed off the town. Right off the bat, you start the game in photo mode, capturing the chaos happening in the town as you fly above in a helicopter. Soon Frank is caught in the middle of the zombie apocalypse, but that doesn't mean he's going to forget about his job. Taking pictures throughout the game helps you level up by giving you prestige points, which is just a fancy name for XP. Once you've situated yourself in the Willamette Mall, you get a tutorial on what kind of things to photograph. The points you get from taking photos depend on how many zombies are present and how well they fit into one of five categories. There's horror and brutality, which are all about gore or killing, drama, which is about capturing tense moments between survivors, 
erotica, which encourages you to take pictures of boobs, whether living or dead, and is frankly kind of gross. And then there are outtakes, which reward you for things like taking pictures of zombies after you've put a Lego head on them. I enjoyed the photography element of Dead Rising so much that I felt a little robbed when Dead Rising 2 and 3 didn't include it. I couldn't have been the only one missing it, since a year after Dead Rising 2 first came out, Capcom released a complete reimagining of it, Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, which replaced the game's new protagonist with Frank West and his trusty camera. Photography also made a return in Dead Rising 4, and added a selfie mode. Of course. Last, but certainly not least, is a series where a camera is your only weapon for fighting ghosts. Fatal Frame, also known as Project Zero, was developed by Tecmo and first released in 2002. I'm going to focus on the sequel, Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly, since it's the one I'm most familiar with. As twins Miyu and Mayu, you explore the Lost Village, which is home to restless spirits and hostile ghosts. The Camera Obscura, an enchanted camera with the ability to exercise ghosts, is the key to surviving. Once you've found it, a filament on your screen will glow when ghosts are near. Looking through the camera's viewfinder will let you see things otherwise invisible to you. Some of the images you will see and capture are helpful, like ghosts showing you the right way to go. But also, a lot of ghosts want to kill you. You battle these hostile ghosts by taking pictures of them, which does damage. The better the picture, in terms of framing and focus, the more damage you will do. There's also something called a shutter chance, which catches a ghost mid-attack and does bonus damage. Your camera can be made much more powerful by using the points you get from taking pictures, increasing range and damage, or adding power-up lenses, which add effects like slowing ghosts or pushing them away. There are even different types of film you can use, with the strongest one increasing exorcism power and reducing reloading times greatly, but only being available in limited quantities. Fatal Frame gives the phrase point and shoot a whole new meaning for video games. That's it for my top five. Let me know what you think about photography as a game mechanic and what some of your favorite examples are in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.